telling you how fast you were going. What? How fast we were going. I don't know. Ten? Eight. Be advised, this is an explicit podcast, so if you're easily offended, get your panties twisted into a knot, turn this off before you get butt hurt and mad, start to cry, have to run to your safe space. All opinions are those of the host and his guest, and do not reflect the opinions of any government agency. Welcome to Motor Cop Chronicles Podcast. I'm your host, Iceman. We're in the MCC studio clubhouse. Today, we have a guest. We're going to use his initials as A.E. Hey, hurry up. He, he don't do that. Just quiet down, quiet. He, uh, he, he don't need that. Uh, oh, is that right? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Okay. He has been a fireman in two different departments. He's full-time at one point, and he also had volunteered. I think, still think he does a little bit of volunteering. So, as we're going to do on all of them, I guess I'm going to start by asking him some questions. First question is, is how long were you a fireman? Uh, I started my volunteer career in April of 2013. Uh, I started my full-time career in December of 2015. So, about six years total. Okay. And what is your favorite thing to drink? Uh, Beer, 100%. Kind of beer. Middle light. Beer's so nasty. Mm. Throw my little thing out. I like the old smoky, salty caramel, delicious whiskey. Send me some for free, please, old smoky. Contact us. Give me a shout out. All right, what what's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? I like I like the uh, the Marvel. Anything Marvel, mostly the Avengers series. Okay, I I, I don't think I like the Avengers. Series I do. Much. I do like the Avengers. I fell asleep in it. Well, Tony Stark dies, so spoiler. So now you have ruined it for me. No, Anybody well, else that's listening? You're not going to watch so. it anyway. What's your favorite restaurant? Favorite restaurant would probably be either Walk Ons or Hooters. Everybody says I think it's the tits. It's, it's the tits. Absolutely. Everybody wants to see the tits. Absolutely. I'm not a big fan of Hooters because I always get the fat pregnant one when I go to Hooters. Yeah, I usually get the flat chested one, so it's it's kind of pointless for me to go. Tell me, what was your favorite thing about being a fireman? Favorite thing about being a fireman is it, it goes from zero zero to a hundred really quick. Uh, you could be doing anything from cooking to watching TV, and the next thing you know, you're running lights and sirens to a house fire, not knowing what you're running into. It's a fire. You know, it's on fire, right? You never know what you're walking into. Believe me when I tell you that. Is it bad when they wake you up out of sleep and you got to get dressed real fast? And- nah. Uh, one thing that I learned really quick in my career uh, is to set your station pants and your station boots while you're sleeping like you do your bunker pants. So just put them around your, your boots. All you got to do is slip in your boots and pull your pants up and get out the door. Don't chafe you when you have thongs on or anything with those bunker pants on. It's not so bad with thongs because usually you have sh- you have shorts underneath it. Oh, that's, that yeah. is great to know. Yeah, keeps everything in place. So. Well, unfortunately, you know, me being law enforcement, we don't get to sleep on the job. Well, you're not supposed to anyway. Yeah. You get caught, you get fired. But y'all do 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 twenty four hour shifts. Yeah, y'all probably get really good at like PlayStation and Xbox, huh? I, I wasn't really too much at gaming in the in the police. Um, I'm sorry, the fire station. But uh, I did like a good Netflix series. I'm, we're watching Manifest right now. Mm-hmm. We like have two seasons, the whole two seasons so far. Really? And if y'all haven't watched it, Manifest is freaking awesome. I'll have to check it out. It's great. All right, well, tell me about your uh, one of your more exciting calls. Well. More exciting. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, um, your most exciting calls are always going to be a structure fire. 
when you hear on your way to a car or when the call comes out originally that it's a working structure fire, it's on. We're ready to go. Or, or if you get a, a call with extrication involved. Um, I had an extrication call one time where it was an 18-wheeler and a Dodge Dart. Uh, the 18-wheeler T-bone the Dodge Dart. And needless to say, there was two kids and a mother inside that were trapped. Um, the kid had a very large sense of humor and was joking with his brother the whole time, which was making me lose my shit. And, uh, the, I remember the little boy telling his brother, uh, he said, you put me against the window. I see. He said, I knew you want to be an only child. And, uh, his, his mother's yelling at him both in the back and I'm dying laughing. I'm having to cut the car open and me and my partner is just, we can't get enough of this kid. It's, it's, it's killing us. Well, at least it's not extrication. Like nobody got. No, no nobody. There was no uh, major injury, so that's that's a plus always. Remember one time, you were on a call with me, and you got excited because y'all had to have permission from us to break a door down the medical. Like yeah, and I didn't even get to break open and, the fucking door. Somebody else did. Gave you permission to go ahead and break the door down, and then the neighbor showed up with the key to the back door. No, under, no, his key was his boot. Uh, or the neighbor kicked it in before you got to get there. Yeah, because I was like, well, uh, law enforcement gave me the okay to, to go ahead and kick the door in. And he was like, I got it. Boom. It's like, all right, then. Yeah, that was anticlimactic. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, asshole. If I do remember, I, uh, I think the, the old lady was having come to medical issue. And when yeah, we walked think, in, she was on the toilet yeah. with no pants on. Yeah, she was. She was uh, like 80, too. Yeah. It Some was, things uh, you cannot unsee. It was not a great sight. Yeah, it was, I wish I could have seen anything else when I opened that door but that. It could have been like a 90-year-old lady. Yeah, or a 90-year-old man. Yes, yeah, saggy yeah. balls. Yeah. You could have to like, help pick him up and then like, have to scoop his balls up and put him in his pants. Yeah, we, we, call, we call those knee knockers in the fire department. That's right. Yeah. It's like, like a wind chime or yep. something. Just swinging between Generate power with them. So did you like driving at the big red fire truck? Oh, absolutely. Um, the first apartment that I worked for, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't able to drive. You had to be there for a certain period of time, and I had left before I actually got to drive for that department. But I worked several part-time departments, and of course, I was a volunteer before I went full-time. But driving the truck is like no other feeling. Uh, I would, I wouldn't compare it to going in a house fire. I wouldn't say it was it was that exciting. But when you hit the cue siren for the first time, it it makes you wet your panties. I'm, I'm going to tell you that. I don't wear panties. So maybe well, make sure it's your panties. Apparently, that, we, 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 so that, we wear thongs. Firemen so. wear thongs. Yeah. Of course, you know, we all know, everybody loves firemen. All the little kids love firemen because firemen don't put you in jail. Yeah, true. True. You had a lot of extrications you had to do? Uh, yes, uh, especially from the department that I resigned from, uh, the latest department I worked for, it was notorious for extrications and house fires. So you, you, you got your fair share of, of excitement for sure. I remember at one point, uh, you were actually worked, I think it was a brush fire, a big brush fire. And you were actually out there by yourself. No mm -hmm. volunteers even showed up yep. in, in the summertime. And you... That was a regular occurrence with that department. Uh, manpower on my end of the district was not the best. Uh, it was it, it was either, it, usually you and your lieutenant, uh, unless it was some kind of fire extrication and you had other trucks coming, but as far as a medical or a heavy lift or anything like that, you was on your own. I've Not too long ago, in the last three or four years, I, I've had some lifts of some elderly people where I actually got there before the fire department or Acadian showed up. And I ended up picking up some uh, elderly people by myself. I did have some medical type training like that from way, way back in the day before you were even born. I uh, actually worked in a nursing home at, for a short stint, and they, you know, teach us how to, you know, pick up all the old people without pulling their arms and stuff out of socket. Mm -hmm. Except when you get the really big ones. Those so are not fun. Yeah, but the, the ambulance service has these really cool chairs now. They said they were made for going down the stairs. Mm -hmm. Stair chairs, yep. Well, Best invention ever. I'll tell you what, 
we had we had a guy one time recently that he uh, he came home from the hospital. Unfortunately, the poor man has passed away since I found out. The family was super nice, but we got called over to help him in the hospital. This man, I'm a big guy. This 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 man, he he was at least 300 plus pounds. He could their 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 house was on stilts with probably like 15 or 20 stairs getting up to the front door mm -hmm. and he he couldn't even get out of the vehicle oh man so we couldn't get him out put him in a wheelchair and then if we did get him in a wheelchair there was no way we were getting this wheelchair on right. these damn stairs yeah. for 300 pounds man so we got the ambulance service come out there if we didn't have them chairs so they get there and they're like well they're, they're not made for going upstairs. And I looked at one. I was like, well, guess what? <laughs> they are today. We're about getting ready to find out if it'll <laughs> work in reverse like this. And believe it or not, it, we got we got it to go up them stairs. And it was a godsend. No, I love them things. Because, like, back in the day when I worked at the funeral business stuff, I had to, the equipment, you know, the technology is so much better now. I mean, we had, I, I had to go on a lot of, you know, deceased people pickups and, I had one one time. It was on a two-story house. Uh, a larger person, two hundred plus pounds. I had no help. I was by myself because you don't have the family help you do mm -hmm. stuff like that. You know, what I mean, it's just not. And, but it was a star. It was actually one of those spiral metal staircases. The ones that you can't get backboards up and down. The ones yeah. you can be, barely get yourself up and right, down. Right, right. <laughs> and I had to bring this person down there by myself. So the whole technology stuff is so much better now. You ever suffered from smoke inhalation or anything like that? Uh, I have been an idiot more than more than once and not wearing an, an air pack. And my lovely fiance has let me know how stupid I am for for doing that. Um, your adrenaline starts pumping when you're on a fire scene, and you could give a shit about that mask until you get in there. Um, I was fighting a, a house fire one time, and uh, I was the first one on scene. I was the first truck in. And immediately I pulled a hose and, and charged it and started fighting fire. But I realized very quickly that I forgot my Numex. Uh, I had my helmet on and all my, my other gear, but I did not have my Numex on. Or my, my face apparatus and everything. But the flames got really big really quick. And if I would have left where I was to go get my Numex, the, the house next to it would have caught on fire. So I had to suffer through it and it sucked long time ago me and this guy i was working with we were working traffic in a subdivision and so i'm not saying places that you do so it's, it's a very large subdivision um, hundreds and hundreds of houses in i got it. you and we're just sitting on a corner you know working traffic people in the subdivision like 25 miles an hour so pretty easy to write tickets there when this person comes by us and stops and says this house is on fire right there. We look up, we can see smoke. And we were like maybe a block and a half away. So we jumped on our bikes ran over there. In the back of this house, somebody had, they were just moving in and they were burning the boxes in the backyard. And of course, all that vinyl side and stuff mm -hmm. going on. Well, as we were getting there, as you know, the fire had got big enough and hot enough where the, the glass, the windows and stuff were, were popping. You know? Right. Well, being a, the dumbass as I, we are, you know, also, <laughs> like, you know, I got, I'm going to save everybody. Well, the, we got the people out. They they were already out. I actually, well, we used a couple of fire extinguishers. Got most, I got most of the fire out with, with a walk, garden hose. Oh, this is, the, this is a story that you throw in my face every time, yes, huh? Yes, yeah. That, oh, I, I can be a fireman. I, 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 put, I put the most of the fire out with a water hose, except for the, parts that got into the attic that mm -hmm. I could reach. We actually, the, the fire department actually came and said that we actually saved that house because it, it was, you know, it had damage but wasn't too long. But while I was doing that, the guy I was working with at the time, us being motor cops as we are, there was a motorcycle in the garage. So he took it and pushed it out into the road. We had to make sure the motorcycle didn't get burned up. Didn't get a life-saving reward for it or nothing. Priority number one, huh? Yes, yeah, save the motorcycle. It's like, we'll be back for the kids in a minute. we got to yep. get the bike to safety. Priority number one. Yes, I, I do pick on him about that. I was like, well, I put out a freaking fire with a damn green water <laughs> hose. But it, I've got, I did get smoke inhalation on that. I had somebody that saw me at the scene at the time. 
It, it was an ex-girlfriend driving past. She said, she's like, well, what, what the fuck's wrong with you? You're not a goddamn fireman. Why are you up in that? Hey, you do what you got to do. That's right. You know, I'm sure if, right. if you were able to, you'd probably like to, to pull speeders over. But we, we go in, make sure everything's safe for the firemen to come in. Here we go. Yes. Well, you know, Here we got we, we got go. to pick on, the police and the firemen got to pick on each other. Oh, I know. I know. I mean, y'all get to cook and watch TV and, and sleep. We don't. I remember uh, quite a few uh, members of law enforcement where I, I worked. They would always come in there. I remember one guy was on shift, and um, he had cooked this great big pot of chili. And I think he had some people coming over to eat. And he went on a run and came back, and there was no chili. Uh, law enforcement had figured out our code to get ins- inside of our station. They seen him leave to go on this run and stole all of his chili while he was on this run. And needless to say, you don't fuck with a fireman's food. Well, fireman's chili is supposed to be delicious uh, uh, from what I hear. Anyway, oh, absolutely. I mean, so if you're going to be let the us law enforcement have the code to your door, it's a good chance if you cook some chili, we might have to partake in the fruits. I don't know what kind of procedures they have for breaching a door. But they were put in place that day. I will, I'll, there was no code. Just procedures. Uh, they did they broke in. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. They had damages, I'm sure. They uh they try. I seen a footprint. <laughs> and then I seen knife marks where but the. They might have heard somebody yelling for help inside. Oh, was that right? Yeah. The chili was saying help me, help me. So they had to get there to make sure the chili was safe. As a figment of their imagination. It might have been. I don't know. But, I mean, did you have video proof that they did that? Uh, at the you time, have, at the time, we did not have. You cameras. got to have video. Yeah. No evidence. We did not have cameras at the so time. So did you get your stimulus check in yet? No. 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 You, you must be like me. You, you didn't do direct deposit. I did snail mail to get my stuff. Right. Yeah. Me too. Still waiting. Come on, Trump. Give me my money. Yep. Waiting. Want some Trump money? Well, we. Are you going to take your money and give it to Tony Spell when it comes in? No. You know who that is? No. Or you know who That's that why he's not getting my money. Uh, he said if you would like to, you could donate your money to his church. No. No? Mm-mm. It would be going to my bills. What about Boober Eats? Who? Boober Eats. In the news today. No, 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 about I, no have, Boober I haven't Eats. heard it. I haven't heard it. Well, it's not... <laughs> In, in this area, of course, but I forget which state it is. I was reading the news. Well, since all the bars and stuff are shut down, this one strip club in this area, this one state where it's, I think, Pennsylvania or somewhere, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on it. The strippers ain't making no money because mm-hmm. they can't work. So what they're doing over there is they're delivering food, and they call it Boo Eats. And the strippers will... Like Uber Eats, but they deliver the food from you, and they got little tight boy shorts on with their butt cheeks hanging out, and they're topless with just pasties over their nipples. Oh, that's And that's, that's where great. they call it Boober Eats, yeah. That's great. Yeah. I'm sure if we had Boober Eats, you'd probably like, I ordered like five meals in like ten minutes. I'm sure there's a lot of people <laughs> around here that would do that, but I... But that's what it's called, Boober Eats. I don't know about that. Well, you don't want a stripper delivering your food uh, no. half naked? No. Oh, yeah, you would. He's just saying that because his fiance is sitting there next to him and she yeah. kick him in the nuts. Mm-hmm, I got to be good. Yes, he he would get some boob reads. He just said he likes going to Hooters looking at titties. I do. These yeah. are titties that ain't even covered up. He said he ain't going to use it. No. I'd have to ask permission first. Yes, I don't believe that. So, I'm going to do a little rant section here. Y'all... I always like my rants. Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. Talk about my rant here today is people that don't use their blinkers. Oh, my God. That is the worst. Yes. Let me tell you what, people. All cars come standards nowadays with a fucking blinker on it. It's on one of the little handles on the side of the steering wheel. If you push it up or down, it causes that little noise okay that lets the people know behind you or the people in front of you that's waiting at the intersection that you're about to fucking turn okay turn your goddamn blinkers on how fucking lazy can you be put your phone down stop texting 
turn your goddamn blinkers on. Fuck you, you get a ticket for that shit. Then if I pull you over to write you a ticket for it, you'll get all pissy with me because you failed a signal. You don't you barely gotta move your fucking hands. Stop being so goddamn lazy. Use your fucking blinkers. That's right, a little short rant. Do my safety tip. We do a roadway assessment. Especially for the civilian riders out there. Always pay attention to like the road. Not what's directly in front of you. Watch a little farther up the road. Oil, diesel, anything that can be in the roadway. If you see it before you get there, you can avoid it. Always do your roadway assessment. If you're going to turn around, watch pine straw, freshly cut grass, all that stuff. I can tell you from experience, I didn't fall down personally. I had an old partner. I watched him bust his ass making a turn on a, a roadway to go get a violator. They had pine straw on the road. It, it's, like, it's like trying to ride over ice and shit like that. It's it's gonna be bad, so always do your roadway assessment, especially diesels. You don't ever want to ride over diesel. Another thing, don't ride on your road. While we're talking about the roadway assessment, don't ride in the center of your lane. I see a lot of civilian riders doing that. Either ride the center line or the fog line. The center of the road is where all the shit that leaks out of all the vehicles is at. Radiator fluid, oil, transmission fluid. Everything is in the center of the roadway. Don't ride in the center of the roadway in your motorcycle. Pick a side. Like I said, me personally, I like to ride the center line. I like to be close. I'll move back and forth on by myself. Some guys like the fog line. Just just pick one of them, whichever you, you know, you're comfortable with. But don't ride in the center of the roadway. That's where all the shit's at. All right? That's a safety tip today. We're going to try to get... You got any, like... We're going to go off on, on a different little angle here today. We usually don't do. We're going to ask our guest here if about one of his uh, sad stories he may have. Sad story. Okay. Uh, any first responder, whether it be law enforcement, fire department, EMS, they're all going to tell you their worst call and eight, eight out of ten times was with a child. Uh, I'm, I'm one of those eight out of ten. Um, I believe you was on this call also. No, maybe not. Maybe not. Um, we had an infant, a six-month-old, that had stopped breathing and was turning blue. I get there, and there is this lady there who is a registered nurse performing CPR. So I got her to continue CPR and, and while I got the AED set up, and we worked, uh, we worked her like a regular code. And we wound up calling it. Uh, we wasn't able to get the infant back. Um, I was told by the coroner that it looked like uh, SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome. I find out later, uh, a couple weeks later, that it was actually foul play involved. So that's that's definitely a story that's going to stick with me for a long time, and it has. Well, unfortunately, in all uh, first responders see too much way we see way too much shit that that the general public has no clue that you you bring home with you it's in your head you don't you got to live with way too much shit that just most people don't see and like i said i i I listen to some other podcasts and a lot of them are really good on the uh talk about the mental health of and stuff i'm i'm more comedy but hey you're a first responder and you're feeling any any kind of something like that don't be ashamed to go out and get yourself some help because uh everybody needs some help every now and then because the longer you do this stuff the the more nightmares you'll have about it trust me i had a death complaint one time i'm talking about this it ain't funny i mean someone did die but this was my first call ever when i was cut loose as a a rookie cop in the unit I get called to an unwanted guest in the trailer hood. I show up. This lady's outside, and she's like, oh, uh, my, my, my ex-boyfriend's inside. He's asleep on the couch, and he won't wake up. Well, so I'm like, well, I've handled these before. I've been training. It's no big deal. I'll go in and just make him leave or he'll go to jail. So I walk in, and I look at the guy. 
And when I seen him, like I said, I, I went to college to be a mortician. It don't take a rocket science sometimes to see a, a, a to recognize a dead body that's been dead for, you know, not decomp or nothing, but he's been dead for a little while. Like long enough where rigor had sit in very well. Mm-hmm. When I'm talking about rigor, I'm talking about rigor mortis where the muscles in the body tighten up. This person was uh, very, uh, he was a known karate instructor at the time and stuff like that. He, unfortunately, he'd have a, a pill problem and he had OD'd as would happen. Well, so I'm a rookie cop. I don't know, you know, still learning all my codes and stuff like that. Now I, I have this dead, I have a dead body there. I have this woman. She's like, well, why don't he wake up? I'm like, I, I played it. Tried to play it off at first. I like play checking the pulse and shit like that. So I get on the radio. I'm like, well, ma'am. She's like, I get on the radio. I was like, 10-7 means out of service or a death or something like that. What's well, the time? I was over my head on this call by myself being a rookie cop. I just got on the radio and said, oh, y'all might want to send me some help. This guy's dead. Oh, my God. You did not. Yes. I straight, you uh, did y'all, not. Y'all, 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 you got sent, well, of course, they're thinking the guy jumped up and did a karate kick at me, and I, I, I shot him or something, which I didn't do. That, that's what, So they start running like code over there <laughs> thinking I shot the karate dude. Well, at this point, I look up, and I'm like, oh, shit, where, where'd that girl go? Well, I look outside, and she's, like, running down the street. I'm like, uh-oh. She might be thinking at the time, I'm assuming he would be, but she's fucking running down the road. So I'd run down and chase her down. I'm thinking, no, I'm going to get here, and they're going to say, well, who called it? I don't know. She just running off down the road, but I told her he was dead. You know, <laughs> like that. I mean, it's not a it, super funny story, but, I mean, for my first, that was my first ever call as, as a solo cop on the street. <laughs> I, 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 I walk up and get a, a freaking dead body. And not knowing what to do when the person just hauling ass down the street. I think that place is still still there today. I can point it out. It's like it's just some of them things you never forget. All right, we got to lighten the mood up. We're getting a little on the sad side. I don't like being on the fucking sad side. I like being on the happy side. Happy is much better. So I'm going to tell this one story. Let's get ready for it. It was pretty funny. And AE was on there with me too. So let's get ready for this, this funny story here. Drum roll, please. Yes, thank you very much. Don't start out funny, but I'm not even going to say the sad part. The call started out when we were uh, ended up going out to a, a medical call, and it was a very much older lady. She did pass away. She was on a second story and stuff, so we had to wait for a coroner to come. Well, when we left out, well, when I left out, I had to I left out the back side of the stairs. This was a very large house. I came down this back stairs, and I saw this this fucking cheetah standing there, but right? scared the fucking oh, shit my, out of me. Look, it we was, rounded this corner. There's a second set of steps that we had to go up with the corner to extricate the deceased out. So we rounded this corner, and I think I was leading everybody. I was behind the owner, if I'm not mistaken. And I rounded this corner. I just happened to look left, and I just see this fucking cat. Okay, yeah, and it's it, huge. It was like, Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? Yeah, absolutely. It was, it's life size. This, this fucking thing's like, it looks real. I said, dark. what the fuck is that? <laughs> Literally. And we walked around the corner and of course everybody's interest peaks. Yeah, so it, it, it did, it shocked where he had it. And, and he's like, oh, I got this, this bronze cheat. He's like, my wife's making me get rid of it. Because she had tripped over it or something and cracked her head open. He said, none of my kids are stuff. Well, I said, well, shit, I said, that thing's cool as shit. And the owner's like, it's like well, you can have it if you want it. I'm like, well, fuck yeah, I'll take it. Big bronze life-size cheetah. I mean, this thing's like the actual size of a real cheetah. So, so I, I started looking at his unit. I'm like, how the fuck is he going to get this thing in his unit and get it home? I tried. I tried. Yeah. I had it. It didn't fit. The tail, the tail was the way it curled up on the back. It's too long. You couldn't close the door. So what we did was we we loaded this fucker up in the back of the fire truck. And the chief of this place at the time was like, "Well, you're, you're lucky. I'm, I'm 
in a good mood and letting you do that. And I looked at him, and I'm like, well, we just wait till you fucking leave and come back and get it anyway. Yeah, you're lucky you showed up. That's what you're lucky for. <laughs> like, like, just, we can do it anyway. Fuck <laughs> you, but anyway, so I still now have this cheetah in my in my front yard in my residence. And, of course, my better half, bam, she, she hates it. She calls it yard junk or something like that. But everybody wants my cheetah. When I first put it out, we were getting some people we were calling, like, thought we had a fucking wolf or something. <laughs> we did have some large dogs, thought one of the dogs had. But I get people all the time wanting my cheetah. That thing's fucking heavy. Yes, it's heavy. But I have a bronze life-size cheetah that's cool as shit in my yard. But that's just funny. This, this cheetah scared the shit out of us because, like mm. I said, in the dark, it looked real sitting there. So It that, definitely got me. That was a little funny one. I think you said you have a little more on the lighter side, funny shit. No, every fireman's got that story. He's every every fireman. Um, hopefully there's no youngins listening to this, but I hope to hell not. Yeah, uh, because they're, they're in a world of hurt for sure. But the first department I was full time at, uh, the rookies were always Santa Claus when it came Christmas time. So of course it's my turn to play Santa Claus. And uh, the district I was working in was more of the hood district. And we uh, we had just started running the route in this neighborhood. And we get a call. A uh, possible overdose in front of a convenience store. So, of course, me being a rookie fireman, I'm kind of getting excited. Uh, which is bad to say. But So I get down off the truck. And I get in the back seat of the truck. Of course, I'm taking all my Santa stuff off and putting my Class B uniform on, which is pretty much like BDU pants and a shirt with a badge on it and a, a nameplate. You should have just done it in the Santa Claus outfit. Yeah, but if once you hear the rest of the story, it's probably best that I didn't. So we get to this this call, and as the rookie fireman, I have to be the lead and any kind of medical call that that we get pretty much like a training more of a training purpose so um, i'm taking care of this guy and i'm I'm asking him all the questions that we ask uh what's your name date of birth you know where you are uh is there anything you took trust me we're not the cops because everybody hates the cops Um, not everybody uh uh, it's still fucking cool whatever whatever makes you sleep at night buddy well this dude looks at me and he just he looks like shit and like i go to ask him what's wrong and he throws up all over me projectile yeah yeah projectile vomit everywhere so my first instinct is the fuck just happened and my captain because i'm going back in and me and this dude's fixing up to talk because i'm i'm kind of pissed at this point and my captain says, just go to the truck and uh, take your take your shirt off. And uh, he said, come back, and if, if we need some help, we'll get you to help. Obviously, my captain knew I was pissed. So uh, I go back over there, and the guy's like, man, I'm sorry. I said, do you fucking feel better? Captain's like, yep, go sit in the truck. <laughs> so uh, I wasn't present during the rest of the call, but uh, I think he got the point. Did, was it like chunky throw up? It was. Do you have like some chicken nuggets stuck if you, on your? No, like if that? you have ever cooked with cream of chicken, it's really yellow and chunky. So you had like bile. Pretty much, it was mm-hmm. disgusting. I'm not sure what this guy took. I didn't stick around long to figure it out. Um, but it was nasty. It was not good. You get any mouth? No, not in my mouth. Could have been delicious if it was creamy um, chicken. No. Creamy, delicious. We're not doing this. Up. We're not doing this. He's got a weak stomach. Yeah. Like We're not doing this. He's got a foot fetish. No, no. Feet is the one thing you will see me flip my shit over. You make me sick. Thank a- you, sir. I make everybody sick. Amen, brother. I cannot stand a foot. Yeah, I have a foot story. No. Yes. It was during a flood. We had a medical call. I was on high water rescue. We had to go to this call, and uh subject was having a medical issue. We had to get him out. The only way to get him out was in the Humvee. 
this poor old fella had the longest <laughs> one, just one now, one fucking toenail. It must have been about three or four inches long, like sticking out past. And that's the, not a toenail. You know, that's that's a talent. It's eagle claw, whatever. Like I don't know. He cannot wear shoes. If you put Crocs on, I think it would like slice through the fucking little plastic Croc shoes. I it. I thought about you the entire time when I was looking at this big yellow talon oh, toenail. Woo. Yeah, it, toenail is not the word you would it, use for that. It's yellow. Yellow is not a good color to have for toenails. I wanted to snip it off. Mm, yeah. You might listen to my first episode of Bob Wire Hair. This was the Bob Wire Hair toenails right here. It's fucking toenails. Like, you couldn't wear a sock. I, I don't understand. Just, just cut, cut the toenail. I mean, you could have got like a side grinder, this motherfucker, or something like that. Mm. It, it was like really thick. That's probably what you would have needed to cut it off. Maybe so. I don't know. Or you could have bit it. Uh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. <laughs> yep, that's me right there. Again. You make me sick. Thank you, sir. I make everybody sick. Near an ass. Uh, um, not the first time. I think that, that, that's one of my nicknames. I've been called an ass so many times. <laughs> so you got any like other like super funny stories to keep it on the lighter side? Uh yeah. Um I ran a call in a God dang. <laughs> I ran a call in a subdivision one time. Um it was a decent subdivision. It wasn't it was in between the trailer trailer park hood and one of the nicer ones around this area. Um Medium, it class was, it was yeah, it was like medium high class. But this lady somehow set this fire alarm off, and of course, we have to run it like it's a house fire. So, I'm first due engine, which means that I'm the first arriving truck. Um, I'm running code, um, and at the time, I had a camera on my helmet and I captured this whole story on this camera uh I get there and she meets me like halfway through the yard and says oh no 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 y'all don't y'all don't need to be here uh I got it under control so throws up a red flag I'm like okay well I need to come in and take a look for myself and I need to get some information from you as well Okay, but uh, my house is a mess. I don't. I said, ma'am, I'm a fireman. I've seen worse. I promise. So I get in this house, and it's, it's smoky. I said, ma'am, I don't think this is nothing. Do you mind if I have a look around? She said, I do mind, actually. I said, well, I'm going to do it anyway. Because there's smoke in here, and I need to make sure that there isn't an active fire. And I have... Uh, infrared camera that we used to see hot spots and I don't know what this lady's problem was couldn't point that at me it would just show a big I'm so hot it would just show me and it would probably just show a black spot no, honestly be yeah so, so fucking hot my hot spot anyway she uh she thought I was recording her the whole time and she asked me not to show the footage to the feds or the cops because it would incriminate her for something she didn't do I said, okay, it's not recording. It just, it, it, it shows me thermal layers. It shows me where the hot spots are. It shows me the temperature of each individual spot. And she said, okay, well, as long as it's not recording. I said, well, it looks like the smoke is coming from your oven. I said, is your oven on? She said, no, it's not, it's not on. I look at the oven and it's on 350 degrees. So, ma'am, your oven is on. So, I cracked the oven to see what was in there, and there was a can of oven cleaner in the oven. I said, ma'am, there's oven cleaner in your oven. Well, yeah, that's how you're supposed to use it. You're supposed to put it in the oven. I said, no, ma'am. She was cleaning the oven? She put the whole can, the aerosol can of oven cleaner in the oven. I said, ma'am, you're not supposed to put the can in the oven. You're supposed to spray it. You're supposed to explode in the oven. (laughs) So I said, look, I'm going to turn your oven off, and I'm going to crack this oven to let this heat out, and then we need to do something with this can because it's not safe. 
She said, you're going to take my oven cleaner? Like, she was more worried about this oven cleaner for some reason. <laughs> and she had empty flower pots everywhere. And would never tell me what these empty flower pots were for. And she said, okay, I think you need to leave now because uh, I think I think that you notified the cops without me knowing. And it's time for you to go. So whatever, I got what I needed for my report, yeah, and I don't put oven cleaner back in the she oven. She sounds she's like she's probably a little paranoid, schizophrenic with the whole. Oh, she, she kept telling me I'm a registered thing. nurse. I work in the hospital. Blah blah blah. Uh, I know what you need to do, and this and that and the other. I said you have no idea. She's just cleaning her oven. Yeah, with aerosol can. I got a story that I had to actually call and ask for the fire department's assistant. Believe it or not, you know I hate, I hate having to do that. This was um ten years ago. Got a call for a public assist. These people call for a public assist. So that's basically somebody just wants some help and you know have a clue what the fuck you rolling up into. Mm, I've been on many of those. So I roll up in there and what these people's problem was is I guess they I was like he's like, Well we'll be back here. So we're going to the house in the bedroom. And he had handcuffed his wife oh. to the bedpost. So. Well, shit. What are y'all doing? We, I thought I figured what they were doing. He had her covered up, thank God. Because believe it or not, most times it's like, oh, no, when it's these people that, that are like that, you, the ones that are naked, you usually don't want to see naked. That's so, that's nine so times out of ten. I, I had my keys, my cuff key. Well, they don't work on these handcuffs because they use like some Japanese Chinese shit they got from <laughs> the the fucking local fair or something. They won and they uncuffed her to the bed and they don't know where the keys at. And it's mm. got some. It's not like regular handcuffs. So that's <laughs> really furry. But uh, they probably had pulled a duck out of the duck pond and won them or something at the fair. Oh, my. So I had to call the fire. The fire department had to come out with some bolt cutters and cut them off to get this woman loose from their kinky sex act. I would have been mortified myself if I had to call the cops because I handcuffed my wife to the bed. Can't I th- yeah, I her. think I would have figured it out. I'd have just broke the bed or something. And I'd have figured I'd it out. I'd say, look, you just going to sit here for a little bit? I'm going to the Home Depot. I'll be back in a minute yeah. with, with some bolt cutter before I called anybody on. But she was laying up there cuffed to that bed. I'm sure, I'm sure it ruined them. Well, hopefully, it must have been finished by that time that, that they were going to uncuff her and realize, like, oh, shit, you know? Yeah, you see what had happened was. So what happened was is she was trying to get away from me. Yep. So any other, like, oh, I know you had... It's not really a funny story, but it was kind of a, a ranch you had about some tree fire you went to one time. If you live on a street, it does not make it your territory. This is not, you don't have ownership of this street. So if I park my truck where I think it's best to put this fire out, got dispatched to a tree fire. The tree is still standing and in jeopardy of tearing down power lines if it, if it fell. So I park my apparatus where I think it's it's best for me to put this fire out. And this man proceeds to come out and tell me, sir, I need you to move this, this truck. And for anybody that's a fireman out there and knows how to pump a fire truck, it's a long process and getting it from road to pump. Your drive shaft controls your pump just like it would your your rear end. So I had already got it in pump gear as we call it, and I got my hose stretched out and everything else. It's it's very complicated to, to move my truck at this point. And the fire chief is actually on scene also and he uh, cares about his image in the public a lot. So I told this man, I said, I'm not moving this truck. He was worried about 
the school letting out and school buses coming through and children walking by and whatever. What I was worried about is this tree falling and having live power lines everywhere and putting everybody in even more danger than having a fire truck sitting in the road. So this man says, no, you don't understand. You need to move this truck right now. I said, I tell you what, you go talk to that man over there and, and let me know what he says. And like I said, the fire chief has big, big expectations of how the community views him. He made me tear all my hose off this truck that I had pulled off, take it out of pump gear and move it out of the road so that, to make this man happy. Oh, fuck that dude. Yeah. I mean, well, he, he came by later and just and let me know how much uh, of an ass he thought I was because he walked by and uh, he said, see, that's how you need to let your community see you or something like that. And I pretty much told him to go fuck himself and continued what I was doing. But I, just because you live been somewhere. I, been ironic if that tree would have fucking <laughs> fell, hit the power lines and hurt some kids. But the truck's not in your, in, by your house no more. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I can't stand motherfuckers <clears throat> like that. They, they think their shit don't stink. Just because you live here doesn't give you ownership. Yeah, I live on the side my road. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah fuck I've you. run a whole bunch of motherfuckers like that. Yeah, fuck that dude. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, we're going to bring this episode to an end. We're going to thank our guest today. It's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. No, we're not. I will get in a war right now. Whose pleasure it was. It's my pleasure. I will talk about throw up and feed again. Okay. Well, we're going to end this one. Yes, that's what I thought. So I win. (laughs) So spread the word on us. Tell your friends and stuff. Give us a listen. Write us a review. Give us five stars. Uh, If you know any motor cops, past, present, future, anybody wants to be a motor cop, any first responders that want to tell their stories, you know, love all my fellow first responders. They can come to the clubhouse. Stand a motor cop. Can't be a full patch member of a. We'll give you a pass for today. Uh, send them our way. Our email address is motorcopchronicles at gmail.com. Look us up on Facebook. Send us a message. message uh, like and share us there. And always remember, smile, because the Iceman could be behind you. I'm cranking up on the throttle. This is how legends are made.